You're listening to the Cow Country Cafe on Beef Team TV. Well, welcome everybody to the Cow Country Cafe. Minnesota. We got it's pretty windy today, which is kind of unusual for us up here in the north. But uh, you know we'll make do, and we're actually getting pretty dry, which also is a little unusual for northern Minnesota. This time of year usually is very very wet, uh, but we haven't had any measurable precipitation for well, at least a month. Uh, so you know we're uh, we're kind of hoping we get a little rain here this afternoon. But anyway, uh, today. A topic that never seems to get old, especially in the, the cow-calf sector, is talking a little bit about cattle handling and handling facilities and, and some of the things that we can incorporate into our program. Or maybe you're looking at uh, designing an entirely new system. Uh, and we're just going to kind of hit the high points here. I don't want to make this presentation too terribly long. Uh, and so we'll kind of hit the high points, some things to consider uh, and think about uh, as you kind of design or retrofit the facility that you already have. Uh, and, and hopefully this will it'll answer some of the, the main questions probably that I get asked the most uh, concerning um, these types of facilities and, and what we how we should handle certain things. So, you know, traditionally this is uh, where we kind of started out uh, with the old snubbing post. And, uh, you know, the big thing, of course, here is we got to think about some things in terms of, I mean, we got to think about primarily what's the point of our working facility. Um, the first thing is safety. Um, and I know, you know, you guys, a lot of you probably have seen some of the most unsafe situations um, imaginable. And so anything we can do to improve the safety of the people trying to handle the animals, the safety of the animals, um, and then also, of course, just try and make things easier. You know, that's the big thing that we're trying to accomplish with a, a working facility that, that works like it's supposed to. And, and you guys know as well as I do, a lot of times that's a lot easier said than done, uh, trying to get a facility together that works the way you want it to work. Uh, and so hopefully uh, we can talk a little bit here about, you know, the actual movement of animals and then how we can incorporate some different design techniques that kind of facilitate, uh, you know, the flow of animals using the proper handling techniques uh, and we kind of fit those things together. And I've seen a lot of, of really good results uh, when you can incorporate all of those items into a, into a single program. Uh, for trying to handle animals. So let's start off talking a little bit, and this is, I'm, I know this is probably not news to most people, um, but let's review it again just to make sure that we're all on the same page because the, the facilities and the ideas that I'm going to talk about depend very heavily on a good understanding of these concepts. So starting out with flight zone and talking a little bit about, you know, how close does a person have to be to an animal to get it to move? Okay, well, obviously that varies from cow to cow. And it varies a lot depending on the situation. You know, when you've got an animal out on the open range, um, you know, maybe she's quite flighty. Now, you get her in a confined area in a, some type of holding trap or something like that, her flight zone can change. It also is going to depend on other animals that are with her, so on and so forth. She might blow up and boil out of a, any type of gathering pen, or she might actually calm down a little bit because she knows she doesn't really have anywhere to go. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to be able to understand our flight zone and make sure that our handling facilities are the appropriate size for the flights the general flight zone of our herd you know some herds are a little bit uh, flightier than others um, and some of them are, are stump broke uh, and so we need a facility that accommodates the type of cattle uh, that, that we have on our place now it, it, you know I think most people understand that uh, cows have monocular vision 
All right, and so they have an eye on each side of the head um, that they can see about, you know, roughly 320 degrees. Uh, they have trouble seeing directly in front of them without turning their head, uh, and they have trouble seeing directly behind them without turning their head. And so those are the areas that we want to stay away from when we're handling, any, you know, handling these animals because anytime you cross those blind spots, the cow's going to want to stop what she's doing and look to see where you're at and if you hang out and walk directly behind a cow or you approach a cow directly from the front it's totally going to screw up the flow of those cattle in the direction that you want to go okay and then the other side of that is looking at point of balance all right and point of balance is just simply that line that basically runs perpendicular to the animal you know roughly right behind the shoulders and the the importance of the point of balance is, you know, basically if you're behind the point of balance line, the, anim the animal's going to want to move forward away from you. If you're in front of that point of balance line, the animal's going to want to move away from you, but turn around and go the other direction. All right, so we need to be aware of that point of balance uh, on a particular animal or group of animals that we're working with to try and get them to move and flow in the direction that we want to go. Uh, and so, you know, anytime that uh, we can take these concepts and put them into uh, a uniform program for trying to handle these animals, we can get the animals to flow and go the direction that we want them to go without having to fight them uh, without having to get them all wound up and choused around and, and those types of things. Okay, now, whether we're out on the range or we've got animals up in a race in very tight confinement, this principle applies to both situations, all right? When we want the animals to move forward, we need to cross that point of balance. Now, when they're in a race, like we see in the picture here, we don't have to worry so much about flight zone. Um, we don't have to worry about blind spots and those types of things. We're really just working off of their point of balance. And we're moving from in front of the point of balance to behind the point of balance. And that's going to want make the animal want to move to her forward, um, even though you're moving the opposite direction. If you want them to stop, cross that point of balance going the other way and the animal will stop um, and so that's a that's a very important thing to understand especially when we got these animals in really tight confinement so we don't blow them up and, get, and start them boiling over the fence or things like that and if they're relatively tame you know you don't have to worry about that so much but that can be sometimes even more problematic trying to get these animals that are you know, maybe a little bit too tame trying to get them to move. But usually if you really use a, a, a tight flight zone and you cross that point of balance in the appropriate fashion, even, you know, a really stump broke animal, you can, you can get them to, to flow and move fairly easily. Sometimes it's hard to keep them moving, but, uh, uh, you know, those are, those are some techniques that we can use. And then, of course, you know, the herding of animals, trying to keep them together in a bunch is important both, you know, if you're out on range or pasture or if you've got them in a, even a, you know, like a gathering trap, uh, trying to keep them together because it's when they get separated that they, things really start to come undone because they like to stay together and they like to move together. And so anything that we can, we can do to keep them in a bunch, keep them moving together is going to be is going to be really positive for us if we if we do things that break that bunch up uh, unless we're trying to do that um, but if we're just trying to get a group of animals to flow if we're breaking up the bunch and, and and getting them moving in opposite directions they get confused they start getting anxious and then we can just visit physically see uh, their body language changes completely uh, and you can see they're starting to get nervous. They don't like what's going on. They start trying to turn back on you. You know, all those different types of things. So if we can use, you know, like in the picture on the screen here, if we can use this type of scenario uh, and use these actions to keep the animals in the bunch, this is how we move a whole group of animals forward just by zigzagging back and forth. We don't want to follow directly behind them because they can't see us. 
and then they're going to stop and turn around to see, okay, where's that person at that's behind us? But if we zigzag back and forth and we cross that monocular vision, then they can see us out of each eye at different points and they're comfortable with where we're at uh, and, and, and they'll generally keep moving. And then it's just a matter of using the flight zone uh, to make sure that they move forward, but not so fast that they're not paying attention to where they're going. Okay, and then the other concept that we really want to focus on is obviously, like we were just talking about, they like to stay together. Um, somehow they choose a leader, and they like to move behind the leader. Uh, and so like in this example right here, we're trying to move them through a gate. And so basically what we want to do is use the concept from the previous slide to get them up to the gate circle around to get to the gate and then move back across their point of balance to get that leader started through the gate and then our motion opposite of of their point of balance or moving across their point of balance of, of balance will cause the other ones to follow that leader right through the gate and so again whether you're you know out in open country or if you're in some type of confinement trap or something like that it's a very useful con uh, concept to use to keep those animals bunched up, keep them calm, uh, and they tend to flow a lot better. All right, so let's talk a little bit about handling facilities. Um, and, you know, these days, I think most of us have probably uh, moved beyond the snubbing post that, uh, that we see here. Um, and, and, you know, not only is the equipment better, um, the building materials are better, we understand animal movement better, um, and now if we can incorporate ourselves uh, into using these types of things, we can make a handling facility uh, that works really slick. And if, you know, like we talked about, if we use the right animal handling concepts, the facility almost becomes secondary. I mean, you can get animals to move through any crappy facility uh, if you really understand and correctly use uh, your, you know, your, your handling techniques. And conversely, you can make a, the most fantastic, well-built handling facility work like a piece of crap if you don't understand uh, or don't implement uh, a lot of our, our proper handling techniques, all right? So, you know, they kind of go together. Uh, you, if you, a, a good handling facility also is a lot about the attitude and understanding uh, in the animal handler of, of what we're trying to accomplish and how to accomplish it uh, in a fashion that, that really complements uh, the facility that we're working in. So, Let's first talk about backside handling facilities. Now, anything backside is on the backside of the chute, and anything on the front side is on the front side of the chute. So we're going to talk about what are we trying to accomplish on the backside handling facilities moving up to the chute. Well, like we talked about on the front end, the big thing we want is safety. Safety for the animals, safety for the handlers, uh, those types of things. We don't want to get animals all wound up and get them hurt or reduce performance or make them afraid to come into the facility in the first place because they know what's coming and we see a lot of uh, uh, you know sorting sticks and hollering and hand waving and you get you know there's always at least one person out there that looks like they're in some kind of sword fight you know waving their their sort and stick around and all of that is unnecessary it's completely unnecessary um, you know once in a while you, you may need to holler at them to get them to pay attention uh, you might have to put some extra pressure on them to uh, get them into an area that maybe they're not sure of. Uh, but beyond that, a, a lot of that business is really unnecessary. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we, want, we want to make a, this a positive experience for the animal, a positive experience for the handlers, and then everything flows so much better. I mean, you can, you can definitely see even within the people working with you as soon as it's time to work cows, you can just see how anxious they get. Those are people that you really should not have around working animals. They're, they are not helping you out at all, other than they're a warm body. 
Um, you need people that are calm and understand the principles of animal handling, understand what we're trying to do, and then working animals becomes so much easier. Um, we also want to have some opportunities to sort on the back side of the chute uh, so we can get them going into the chute in the order that we want them to go. Uh, if that's important to you, sometimes it's not. It just kind of depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, but I always like to have some sorting facilities on the back side of the chute and some sorting facilities coming out of the front of the chute. Um, and then, you know, we want to be able to supervise what's going on and make sure that, uh, uh, you know, things are flowing and working the way that we want them to do. All right, so let's start off with this example handling facility here. And this is one I just kind of came up with. It, it's, it's similar to a one that I Im implemented on my own place. Um, there's nothing fancy about it. It doesn't need to be fancy, but it accomplishes the objectives that I need it to accomplish. Okay, so if we're going to start out in that middle rectangle, um, and that's just kind of my gathering pen, and I kind of designed this for about 100 pairs. Um, you probably could fit more based on the dimensions in here. You could probably fit more, but it starts getting pretty tight. Uh, and that's kind of when you're going to start running into problems is, is when you try and pack them in there too tight. Um, so I like to keep plenty of room. Um, you know, if you're retrofitting something, maybe you don't really have that option. That's fine. We can work around that. Um, but I kind of built this thing from scratch. I made it the size that I wanted it to be. Uh, and that's about where we're at. And so basically you can see that from the left-hand side, we bring them in uh, to the facility, either off pasture or wherever they're at, you know. They come into that gathering pen and they can just hang out in there until we're ready to move them down the race. And maybe we're moving them down in bunches, maybe we're moving them all in one shot. Um, you know, it kind of depends on what we're doing. All right, but then we can move them down this alleyway, uh, down and around. We've got some opportunities to sort them up into different groups before we hit, uh, you know, the, the box there in the lower right hand corner um, and we'll talk through each of these different sections of the facility as we go on uh, here but that that's basically how it works here is we're just moving from the gathering pen maybe we're doing a little sorting and then we're getting them up into the box before they head up to the chute okay so let's talk a little bit about the dimensions of this particular design and I would say I built this base kind of on recommendations uh, that I've heard and kind of what I've experienced and observed. And, and maybe you'll have some different experiences uh, that will want to you'll want to modify in your particular situation. That's fine. Um, but just some basic things to keep in mind here. In our large gathering pen, um, we need to think about the number of head that we can work at a time. All right. And so if you have you know, 500 cows or whatever, and you're not going to work all 500 of them in a day, uh, period. Uh, it just is not going to be feasible. There's no need to build the gathering pen for all 500 head, okay? Just think about how many you can work at a time, and then you can work them through in bunches. Always make your pens rectangular. Don't make them square. And, you know, depending on what kind of crew you have, if it's just you or if you have some help, that's going to make a difference on the shape, well, not the shape, but the dimensions of that rectangle. You know, usually it's me and one other person working through uh, our handling facility. So I designed everything uh, to be covered by either one or two people. All right. And so, you know, one person maybe can cover 15 feet. Uh, in width, all right. And so, if you look back at that uh, that gathering pen in the middle, uh, you know I think it's about 30 feet wide. So two people can cover that area as we're trying to move animals in and out of there. Does it always take two people? No, it doesn't. Um, but if we have some some cows that are particularly you know kind of a problem or they're a little stubborn, two people can handle it no problem. You get wider than 30 feet. Now it's going to take three people. Uh, without a lot of really fancy stick waving and hollering and, and those types of things. And those are the things I'm trying to avoid, right? And so the size of the rectangle is about 20 square foot per cow, uh, 35 square foot per pair, uh, or about 14 square, square foot on wean calves, okay? So while I'm dealing mostly with pairs, so I built it for 100 cows at 35 square foot per pair, 
Uh, so you can look back at that picture and see it's about 3,500 square feet. And then I just made, made the dimensions of the rectangle to be 3,500 square feet with it being no more than 30 feet wide. All right, and that determines how long the rectangle is. Now, when we get into our holding and sorting pins, you know, it's a very similar situation. We want them rectangle, we don't want them square. We gotta think about what group sizes would we most commonly be putting these animals into. Uh, and that's kind of how we're gonna design the, the size of our, our sorting pin. And again, I'm sticking with the 35 square foot per pair because that's what I'm working through there most often. Now, yes, I, went, I run wean calves through, I run dry cows through, and, and it's, it still works just fine for those. So I'm going with the size of the biggest square footage that I'm gonna possibly need on that particular situation. If you don't run cows, you don't need so much square footage. Um, but I would say most people that have these types of facilities probably are gonna run some cows through and so those are the types of things you need to think about. All right, now the alleyways from the gathering, well, alleyways anywhere, uh, just that area that goes from one pen to another. Um, this is where I probably see a lot of the mistakes in handling facilities is these alleyways are either too narrow or too wide. All right, remember a, a single person can cover 10 to 12, maybe 15 feet pretty easily by themselves. And so that's about where we want our alleyways. Too, any narrower than 10 feet is too narrow because the cow can't even hardly turn around in, in uh, you know, an eight foot, or uh, even in a 10 foot, she could just barely turn around. Um, and so that would kind of be the minimum of where we would we'd want to see alleyways. It's 10 to 12 foot wide. Um, sometimes you'll see them a little bit wider than that. Uh, if you're gonna have a lot of cattle running through there at one time or you've got more help or those types of things but you know I would say 10 to 12 feet is probably plenty the wider the alley the faster the cattle will move down the alleyway all right and so you want to keep that in mind too as it's narrower they slow down they get crowded and then they can become a little bit difficult to move and so I'd say 10 is about the minimum like I said and then of course you know as it would stand to reason. Your gates need to be about the same width as your alleyway, uh, or they should match the width of the alleyway, and usually that's about 10 to 12 feet. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the box. And the box is just a collective term for whatever mechanism that moves cattle from the alley up into the race heading up to the chute. And there's a lot of different, this is the sticking point in a lot of, work in facilities that is really aggravating you know any one of these in the right situation they work fine a lot of it has more to do with the animal handling um, but we'll go through them we'll talk talk about them a little bit uh, and then you know you can figure out which one maybe works the best for you so we've got five different uh, box designs here a quarter gable an inline gable a tub surround bud boxes and switchbacks and so let's talk about those individually okay quarter gable uh, this is an old old design if you have any old facilities from way back they've probably got either an inline or a quarter gable going into the race and it's simply just where the alleyway uh, moves into the race. There's no real mechanism or design, uh, no real mechanism there that forces them. You crowd them into the gable and then they move up the race. And we all know that they, they come up the alleyway, they're supposed to turn. They do turn, but then they plug up right at the end of the race because the it's widened out just a little bit with that gable. And the idea was, is when they crowd up in there, they can't turn back on you, which, you know, most of the time they don't. You'll always have one that tries to climb up on top of another one because they're crowded in there too tight and you're standing behind them waving your stick and hollering at them and they start getting anxious and they start climbing over each other and then one climbs up, gets turned around and now the whole thing's plugged up and you got to release them all back just to get them all going the same direction again. So my particular opinion is quarter gables do not work very well um, they can if they're used properly, but most of us don't use them properly. Uh, and so uh, it becomes a little bit of a pinch point 
in terms of trying to get the cattle going up the race. The inline gable is the same concept except there's no turn. It's just the alleyway narrows down at the gable and goes into the race. Again, they plug up, they get turned around. They don't know what the heck they're trying to do. It takes a little bit of effort to get the first cow going down the race, and then the rest of them will follow. But if you're a one-man outfit, that can be a little bit difficult because once they start plugging up at the gable, uh, it's hard to uh, you know it's hard to get them flowing again. And what you know basically what we want to try to do here is when we're moving from the alley to the race is don't break the flow. And you kind of get them comfortable moving together as a little group. Um, and then they just follow the leader like we talked about earlier. They'll just follow the leader through the gate, up the alley, up the race, uh, and you don't ever break that flow. Uh, the, the quarter gable and the inline gable, they do a really good job at breaking flow if they're not used properly. And generally, I would say the biggest issue is trying to get too many cows up the alley and then they start plugging up at the gable. But you can really say that for any of these designs, um, whether it's these older style gable type deals or even, you know, tub surrounds and those, you know, people complain about tub surrounds, but the biggest thing is there's too many cows in the, in the tub to make it work properly. And the cows get confused and they don't know who they're following and uh, you know and then they just start plugging up and you got a mess so here we are with our, uh, our tub surround and you know the other thing of course is and we'll talk about this in a little more detail here in just a minute but the box wh whatever design it is the box has to be a size that's compatible with your race so if your race can only hold four cows there's no need to have a box that'll hold ten because we don't want them standing in the box we want them moving through the box never stopping um, and so if our race only holds four cows then we're only bringing four cows into the box at a time we load them up the race we have our backstop so they can't back up boom you know that's where we want them they don't break flow until they get to the chute or at least they're standing in the race waiting to go to the chute but we never want animals to stale out and stand around in the box because then they don't flow properly and when you get too many cows shoved in the box at one time because there's more cows than what actually goes up the race uh, you know that's when you start running into problems they plug up they get turned around they get confused they don't know what's going on you got somebody yelling waving their stick and now they're more confused and anxious and they're just not paying attention to what they're supposed to be doing uh, and so one thing leads into another and it just makes a mess so there's not a thing in the world with tub surrounds but they have to be used properly um, and so I would never discourage anyone from using a tub surround but you may need to rethink a little bit about how you're using the tub surround uh, and, and, and to help uh, achieve the objectives of trying to get those cattle to, to flow and to never stop that flow. And that's really where this bud box design came into being. And of course, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the bud box or at least have heard of it, designed by a guy named Bud Williams, who was kind of a well, I don't know if he was a pioneer, one of the pioneers of, of, of animal handling and stockmanship and those types of things but anyway he kind of designed this bud box idea and so let me explain it here a little bit all right so on the right side uh, we've got the alleyway leading up into this box and then there's a gate in the middle and the gate is solid okay they can't see they're not supposed to be able to see through the gate all right now and they come into the box you close the gate the animals hit the back side of the box on the left hand side they can't go anywhere so they want to turn around to back to where they come from okay so they turn around and they come back and then they hit that solid gate and they can't see down the alleyway so they're looking for the next exit and the only exit available is down the race and if you don't stop their flow uh, on purpose or inadvertently by standing in the wrong spot uh, they'll just follow that gate right up to the race, go right down. The rest of them will follow them if you don't pressure them too much. Uh, just let them, let them follow in a natural flow, and they'll just run right up the race. Now, there are some issues 
with getting a bud box to work right okay uh, the first issue again the bud box shouldn't hold more animals than what will fit down the race so if you have a, a, a four cow race you should only have a four cow bud box if it gets too big the bud box if the bud box the dimensions of the bud box if you build them too big then the animals there's too much space in there for one person to cover uh, and the animals will start to see that there is more than one escape route once they hit that solid gate they'll see down the race but they'll also see mm, I can sneak behind the person that's pushing us and then they start turning around they start getting confused they get anxious and then nobody's paying attention we start hollering and waving our stick the flows broke uh, and now they don't want to move okay and so we really need to be if you're gonna put in a bud box you really need to understand the concept of making sure that the size of the bud box matches the capacity of your race all right and so if you're gonna put in a ten head bud box you better put in a 10 head race so they can all comfortably fit down the race without any real serious crowding um, and those types of things now there still are issues because obviously we've got these cows that want to go halfway down the race and stop um, we'll just we'll address that here in just a minute and then of course once you got one cow up in the race plugging up the thing then the flow stops and you got problems but but again, we'll, we'll touch on that here in just a minute. The big thing is with the bud box, there's no need to apply a tremendous amount of pressure from behind. All we're trying to do is make sure that they see that there's only one way to go, and that's up the race. There, you can't pressure them from behind. There's got to be, if you've got a cow stalled out in the race, you've got to have somebody up there getting that cow going. And there's probably a reason that she stalled out in the middle of the race, and we'll talk about that. Okay, so uh, typically, you know, your bud box is 12 to 14 feet wide. Again, that's the space that one person can cover comfortably, easily, uh, without breaking up the flow of the animals. It gives the perception to the animal that there is no way around you, and so I need to look up the race if I want to get out of this bud box. Um, and then your depth will be deterred, the depth of the bud box whether it's 20 feet or 30 feet or whatever, is going to depend <clears throat> on the size of your race and how many cows you can get there in there in a single swipe. Okay, now, the switchback. This is an old school design. Um, you don't see very many of these anymore. Um, a lot of these were more common further out west than uh, what we see on the east side of the Missouri. Um, but these are extremely handy if they're built properly, uh, they're the right dimensions, and they're used properly. Sorry, I had to take a drink there. <clears throat> All right, so you can see that we've basically the switchback, and I don't have this, you know, I'm not an artist. I didn't draw this exactly right because the pins are more rounded than maybe what I've got them depicted here uh, in the picture. Um, and so it kind of looks like on each side it's flat and then it goes up and, and rounds to a central point at the top of the picture. Well, really what it's supposed to look like is almost like a half circle. Um, and so uh, I apologize for my poor artwork uh, there, but, but I think you get the general design. Okay, and so basically we move uh, the cattle in to the holding trap on the right hand side uh, and they flow up towards the top which is the end of the race all right and what you want to do is there's a gate there and you have that gate open all right and so let's say there's there's a hundred cows in there and our race holds ten cows all right so I'm gonna sort off ten cows out of the right hand side I'm gonna run them through that open gate on the left going to the left hand side and as I walk through, I'm going to close that gate, and that gate is solid, all right? And so then they're going to go down the other side, and they're going to want to come, they're going to hit the bottom. So it kind of works basically like a bud box. Um, they're going to hit the back side of that, turn around, and they're going to head back towards that gate that they come through, because that's where they came from. But that gate's closed. And so the only way out 
uh, is if you're standing in the right position, which is just on the other side of the race, um, and so when they come back up uh, the side there, they come see that gate, the only way out is to go down that race. And if you don't pressure them, you don't break the flow, all the other cows will follow them right down the race. All right, And then, of course, as you can see, the race runs right down the middle to the chute. And we don't have, I don't have it drawn in this particular design here, but you could have some sorting facilities on the front side of the chute if you wanted to. Um, you could modify the right-hand side of the switchback uh, to uh, have some type of, of sorting facilities there. I've never seen that actually in, uh, in a real switchback, but I, I guess I don't really see why you couldn't do that. Uh, there could be some some options there uh, if they you if you felt that there that was something that you needed you could modify that a little bit without much problem okay and then the handy thing is of course is if you uh, there's another gate there that you can shut and I really don't have it drawn on here um, but you can open that up and shut off the race and then use that as a loadout and that's where your loadout would be on the back side of there if 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 you so desired to have a loadout. Uh, in in the facility, which I think most people would, um, and so there's that option as well. But that that's a I think that's a design that's kind of been lost to the annals of history that maybe should make a comeback. It's kind of a combination of a kind of a bud box type scenario, uh, and and it works really well. It's very compact. It fits in a very small area, and you can run a lot of cows through it in a very short amount of time. All right, so again, the box needs to match the capacity of the race. Um, don't use the uh, any type of box, whether it's a tub surround or a, a bud box or whatever. Don't use it as a holding pen. They're not holding pens. If, you, if, if the cows are standing in there, they're not flowing, and now they don't know what to do. All right, so you got to keep the flow, keep the flow, keep the flow, uh, and, and keep them cattle moving until they're up in the race, and you got a backstop behind them, and they can't go anywhere. All right, so uh, this is not probably news to anybody, but uh, let's just talk about the main system a little bit um, in terms of we talked about the crowd box there on the right side. The race is just the alleyway going up to the chute. Uh, we may have, you know, obviously there's different ways you can configure this. You can have a scale box with a backstop. Um, you'll want to have backstops in the race or at least the opportunity to plug the end so they can't back up on you. I'm not a big fan of the uh, either the the gates that hang down as a backstop or even the rotary backstops because more often than not cows stop at each one of those and that is not what we want when they're going up the race. I'm, I'd much rather just have either a bar or a gate at the end of the race um, just so they can't back out and and not have all that business in the race because those are just points that slow up the process and break the flow okay um, the other question always is well are your the sides of your race solid or open um, and I think that depends that's that's that in and of itself is a long discussion because a lot of it depends on where your facility is uh, what you're going to be doing with it those types of things um, if it's outside I would say it's a lot better to you know outside with really uneven light it's a lot better to have them solid um, if that's not the scenario then I think they can be open and it's not that big a deal but the, the biggest thing is is we're trying to make the light inside the race as even as possible so there's no bar shadows or any of that type of stuff that is gonna make a cow want to stop and be like eh, I'm not really comfortable going much further uh, and so that's really the objective with does it does it make any difference whether they can see out or not? No, not really um, That's not really the objective of having the solid sides The the objective of the solid sides is to make the light as even as possible and we don't want it dark uh, Because they don't like going into a dark area um, We want we just but we don't want shadows. We don't want you know these different variations in light contrast as they're going up the up the race because that's what's going to slow them down all right so then obviously up on the front end we've got some we could have a scale box if we wanted 
Um, you've got some type of palp cage if you wanted, and then you have uh, the chute itself. So let's talk a little bit about the chutes. Now, chutes are uh, a very personal thing. Uh, all of these chutes I'm going to show you are, there's not a thing in the world wrong with them. I don't think there's one that's better than the other. Um, but some people have different preferences, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with, number one, the accessibility of the different levers and controls and things like that. Some work better than others for certain people. Um, one thing that I know is an issue for some is being able to visually see uh, the animal as it enters the head chute. So they can, you know, get the, even if it's a self-closing or a self-catching head chute, we know that those don't always work exactly uh, like we would like them to. Uh, and so there's got to be somebody there manually closing the, uh, the head chute. And like in this particular design, which I think this is a good shoot, but with that door there, uh, that can create some problems in terms of if you've got some animals that like to charge the chute, and invariably there's at least a couple, you can't see them coming very well. Uh, and so they, they slowly creep up into the chute, and then boom, they take off trying to jump through the chute. And if you can't see very well, your time is always off. And then you owe somebody a six pack for letting one through and, and it's just that can be a little bit of a problem so that i think those are some things when you're selecting a shoot is are the hand controllers all where you want them to be do they fit your physical you know whether you're tall or short or whatever and then the other thing is is can you visually see where you want to be able to see uh, when you're looking at the head shoot and an animal is coming in and you're going to close it all right, so here is obviously probably one of the fancier models uh, that's not hydraulic. Um, and now I don't think a chute necessarily has to be fancy to work properly. Um, you know, this one, the, the thing with this one here is it's built so heavy. Um, and so if you're running a lot of feeder cattle through or something like that, um, it's probably good to have a pretty heavy chute. Cows generally aren't, unless they're pretty wild, they're generally not that hard on a chute. Um, but they can be. Uh, you run a lot of bulls through there, you're going to need something heavy. Uh, these preferts are nice shoots. They're obviously a little bit lighter built. Um, but for most cow-calf guys, they're going to work fantastic. Uh, and, and so you got that type as well. Now here's the old, I don't, you know, I'm sure they still make these. You don't see them too often anymore, but it's kind of the old maternity shoot. Um where the sides open um, and you know for a cow calf guy if you want to have a good quality working chute just to work cattle through but you also are going to use it for calving this is a good option um, there are some issues of course i think you need to be aware of of course if a cow goes down in that chute it's hard to get that door open uh, because once you get some pressure on that latch it won't release um, uh, and uh, you know, so there's that that you have to contend with. And there's a lot of overhead bars and things that you can whack your head on uh, if you're in the chute trying to work on, pull a calf or get something straightened out or something like that. And, and I'm not, it's not this particular brand. They're all kind of this type of uh, design. And so those are, um, so I'm speaking specifically about the design, not the brand. Those are some things you need to be aware of. You know, and I think for a lot of folks, if you're just running a basic cow-calf deal, this is a heck of a... There's nothing wrong with just having a basic head chute. Um, and I think, you know, the rest of the chute and the alleyway and everything, if that's something you want to build yourself and you want to have access, uh, kind of like a, a palp cage, you can build that into your design very easy. So this is a very low-cost alternative to buying the entire chute. And here's a prime example of that right here. Uh, you know, there's not a thing in the world wrong with this setup right here. Uh, it works good. Uh, the cattle flow through it like you want them to. It's sturdy. It's stout. Uh, so it works pretty well. The only downside, of course, is there's no way to access the backside of the cow once she's in the chute without crawling over the fence. 
and there's no way to keep the next cow in line from running up your backside uh, if you need to be in there doing something. So if you really, uh, if you need to get in there and handle the animals while they're in the head catch, maybe this isn't the best design. Um, you know, there would need to be some modifications to really make this a safe situation. Um, but if you do, if you just run cattle through and you don't have to get in there uh, and do anything, then, uh, you know, this is a real good option. This, of course, is not a real great option, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to say that it's never been used before uh, if you got a doctor something out in the pasture. And you gotta got to throw in a funny slide here every now and then. All right, so just a couple of things to wrap up here on this deal is, is let's just look through some simple working facility designs for smaller herds. Um, I like this one right here. There's not a whole lot to it. It's easy to build. Anybody can do it. It doesn't take up a lot of space. And you can just see you come in here at the bottom and there's some holding pins there with gates. They come up into a crowd. You can crowd them around into the chute. So that's kind of a, if you look at that box, um, it's kind of a combination of a tub and a quarter gable. Um, and so I can tell you right now, there's gonna be some issues there uh, if that's not used properly. I would probably take that quarter gable out of there uh, and make that more of a tub surround type situation. I think that will make it flow a lot better. Uh, you know, here's a little, you know, basically they're all basically the same concept, but this one has a bud box and you can see that the sorting pins are up there at the top on the back side of the, of the chute. Uh, and you can move them through a series of, of sorting facilities. Um, and maybe not quite the sorting facilities that I would like, but for many people that's probably more than adequate um, just because the only thing you can do is move them forward. So I can take a bunch and move them forward, but I don't have anywhere to sort them out of. Uh, that would be my issue with this particular design. Um, and so I like the setup, but I might add some uh, some ways to actually physically separate animals into smaller bunches if I needed to do that, which I personally need to, but others may not. And so you may not need those, you know, that's something, that's a decision you have to make, but then they simply, they come around, uh, and head down to the bud box on the right, the lower right hand side, that solid panel gate shuts. And then in this particular one, you wouldn't necessarily need to have a double alley, but in this particular one, they've got a double alley set in there, um, and they can, uh, uh, you know, move through that. The other thing I like about this particular bud box is they got a walk-through gate right there, and that's real handy because you're going to be in that bud box, and most of the time I'm not too worried about getting, you know, run over or anything, but I get tired of having to crawl over the fence once I've got them up in the alleyway and I got the backstop in i got to crawl over the fence to head up to the chute. But this has a nice little walkthrough gate in it that I have not seen in many commercial designs. And so I really like having that walkthrough gate in there. And <clears throat> In fact, I'm in the process of adding one to my bud box right now just because that's so handy just to be able to have that little gate to walk through. All right, and then this is the example facility that we, work, that we looked at uh, kind of on the front end. Um, and now we're going to just talk a little bit about the front side facilities. So over on the right hand side and about the middle, you can see there's a chute there, a chute and a palp cage. And then once they come out the chute, they're still heading in this alley. And then I've got three pins there. If I need to do some sorting on the front side, I've got some pins to do that. If you don't ever need to do that, then I wouldn't worry about including those in there. You don't really need them. But if you do need them, that's a great place to put them. Um, or they can just run down the alleyway and out back towards uh, where they came in. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a fairly simple system uh, to build. It's a very simple system to use. It works well uh, if, it's, if it's set up right and used properly. Uh, that's a fantastic facility. Uh, and then one last thing, we talked a little bit earlier about calving, um, and for cow-calf guys, obviously that's going to be pretty important. Um, these maternity cages are fantastic, and, and they work well. 
they're a little spendy of course I think a guy could probably build one on his own pretty easily but uh, the portable ones or the movable ones like this particular one boy they are nice they're probably about 55 55 to 7500 bucks so they're not giveaways uh, but they do work nice they're fantastic for safety uh, in terms of making yourself safe making the cow safe uh, those types of things and you can do a lot of those so I just thought I would mention that real quick um, if the cow goes down it's not a big deal because there's not a cage that she's trapped in uh, and so there's there's not a not the possibility <clears throat> of her getting hung up on something or getting a latch that won't release uh, or that type of situation so uh, that may be important to some people keep that in mind if you see one of those uh, it's a fantastic uh, they, they really work great so uh, I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the, the kind of the, the webinar today um, if you have any questions you know uh, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment box and we'll try and get back to you um, and you know like I say this is kind of just the the very surface level type things you need to think about in terms of either retrofitting uh, a current working facility or designing a brand new one I wish you good luck and uh, we'll see you next time